variations to weekly contest 311. The problem that I have chosen is length of the longest alphabetical continuous substring. Here in this question, we are given an input string S and what do we need to do? We need to return the length of the longest alphabetically continuous substring. I'll be walking you through the example as well as the algorithm behind it, why the presentation as I usually do. So let's quickly move on to the P. Now let's get back to the problem. I have taken a slightly different example so that you guys get a good hold of the concept. We have the string as A, B, A, C, A, B, C, D, A. And if I ask you what is the length of the longest continuous alphabetical substring, then you will say it's A, B, C, D that is highlighted over here. As I've already told you that the problem is based out of two pointer. So I'll use the same technique. We'll use two pointers. The first one would be the start pointer. Another one would be the end pointer or the I pointer, whatever you want to call it. Let's call it I pointer. Let's start the iteration. What I'm going to do, I'll compare I plus one with I. So what character do we have at I plus one? At I plus one, we have B. Is it contiguous with respect to the character at I? Yes, it is contiguous in nature. Here we have B, here we have A. As a result of which, what we are going to do, we'll increment the I pointer. So I gets incremented over here. Let's proceed ahead and let's do the same thing again. What I'm going to do, I'll compare I plus one character with I. What is the I plus one character? The I plus one character is A. Is it contiguous with respect to I? No, it is not contiguous. That means we have successfully identified the length of our first contiguous substring, which happens to be I minus S plus one i minus s plus 1. So what do we have at i? We have at i is b, we have at s is a and at what all indexes do they occur? i occurs at 1, a occurs at 0, s occurs at 0. So 1 minus 0 plus 1 gives you the length and it turns out to be 2. So this is in sync with our expectation. The first contiguous substring length that we have identified is 2 and let's update our max length variable to 2. Let's proceed ahead. Since we saw that there is a breakage condition, the string is becoming discontiguous. Therefore, what we will be doing will be resetting the S pointer. So H S pointer gets reset to over here. Now we have S here and I also points to here. That means it's a fresh start. And again, what I'm going to do, I'll compare I plus one with I. So what do we have at I plus one? We have C. Is it contiguous in nature? No, it's not contiguous in nature. Therefore, what we are going to do, we'll do a reset operation. And since we are doing the reset operation, uh, we will update the S pointer to over here and I gets updated to here. Also at the previous index, we should calculate using the same formula that we talked before I minus S plus when so that we get the length of the contiguous substring with respect to this substring. And uh, that length would come out to be I is equal to S. That means it would come out to be one. So the second possibility of answer is one. One is lower than two. We'll skip it. Let's proceed ahead. The next character that we have is C and what we are going to do, we'll compare it with I plus one, this one. Is this contiguous in nature? No, it is not contiguous in nature. What we are going to do, we'll do the reset operation. So again, S points to here and I points to here. Let's proceed ahead. Next, what we're going to do, we'll compare I plus one with I. We have B and A. Uh, at I plus one, we have B. At I, we have A. These two are contiguous in nature. Therefore, it's a happy case. Let's increment the pointer I. I gets incremented to here. Again, we compare I plus one with I. These two are contiguous in nature. We update the pointer I. Let's do the same thing again. Uh, we compare I plus one with I. It's contiguous in nature. Let's proceed ahead. I gets updated to over here. And again, let's do the same thing. We compare I plus one with I. Since these two are non-contiguous, discontiguous in nature, what do we do? Uh, we calculate the length of longest contiguous substring that we have identified in alphabetical order. We use the same formula. So I points to what index? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is the seventh index. And this one happens to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 4. And uh, let's use the same formula. 7 minus 4 plus 1. What does it give you? It gives you 4. So the second possibility of answer turns out to be 4. And we compare it with our max variable. It happens to be 2. We update it to 4. So this is 4, not 8. So we update it to 4 and this becomes our answer.
So this is a typical two pointer approach that I have used here. So let's quickly walk through the coding section. The time complexity of this approach is order of n. The space complexity of this approach is here. I've created five variables: start, i, length, max contiguous length, current contiguous length. And let's start the while loop where I'll iterate the i pointer i less than n. And again, again I have created another while loop that is basically responsible for incrementing i with the condition that the character at i plus one index is one greater than the character at i th index. If that statement is true, we keep on incrementing it continuously. Once we are out of the loop, that means the characters are no more contiguous in nature. Continuous in nature. What do we do? We extract the current length using the same formula i minus start plus one. We compare it with the max variable. We choose the one. We update the maximum length variable uh, using the formula max dot max max length comma current length. We increment the ith pointer and we update the start pointer for the next iterations to happen equal to i. Once we are out of the loop, we simply return the max length variable. Let's submit this up. The time complexity of this approach is order of n. The space complexity of this approach is constant time. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead, and stay tuned for more updates on coding decoded. And please, guys, do subscribe to the channel. Your subscription really means a lot to me.